Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by The Last Man Standing with Loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simeon, and joining me on the line is the brilliant James Cook returning to the show. James, how are you, mate? How was your Christmas? I'm very well, thanks, mate. Yeah, it was lovely. Um, Feeling a little bit more excited about Arsenal yesterday, but uh, yeah, Christmas as a whole, very, very positive. Agreed, mate. It was without, you know, being a little bit too doom and gloom. There was positives, weren't there, James? I mean, I know the result wasn't exactly what we were looking for. Bournemouth has struggled this season. We felt that maybe we probably should have gone there and won, and particularly with the way the game panned out. But an away an away draw, considering the way our away form has been, not just this season, but last season too, and the season before that, it's not the end of the world, is it? No, certainly not. And I think given the circumstances, it's just it's just not worth being negative about at all. Uh, if you look at the positives that we can take from yesterday's game, I think the result, ultimately, if we'd have won, drawn or even lost, is a little bit, I don't want to say irrelevant, but in the grand scheme of things, I think what we want to see in the immediate term from Arsenal is a better style of football. If we'd have won that game yesterday in the way that we already beat Bournemouth this season, if you remember the 1-0 victory at home when David Luiz scored that header, if we'd have won in that style, then I'd be more concerned about that than the way we played yesterday. I thought we played some really good stuff. The patterns of play, the way we moved the ball, the transitions, the fact we've got Mesut Ozil ticking away from home. Yeah, we were coming up against the Bournemouth side that really are in a rut of form. Um, they've only won once in their last seven games. They've lost all the other six. So it's a game that we definitely should have been, if we were you know, on, on form, then I'd say we should be going there and winning. But the reality is we went into this game 11th against a team that are 14th. We're not the force that I think a lot of fans still think we are. We are in a, in a real mess in a minute and that, that's the reality. Um, but it was definitely a good building block yesterday. The, the football was there. If we'd have had our finishing boots on, particularly with Lacazette, then, then we'd have won this game comfortably. Absolutely. There was visibly more intensity, in my opinion. There was a lot more um, hard work off the ball. It looked as, you know, as though our press was actually coordinated. And there was one particular bit um, where you, there was a clip of Mikel Arteta on the touchline. And I think it was Socrates that he was shouting at. He was shouting, Papa, Papa. Like he wanted him to just close his man and, and almost follow up with the press that the fullback had made. And that's, that's what Arsenal have been missing. In order to press, you need to do it as a unit. You need to do it as a team. And you need to know when and where to do it. And I felt like Arsenal was sort of half-heartedly doing it under Unai Emery. And at times, you know, failing to close the follow-up player. So it's no good closing the guy with the ball down if you're not going to close the receiver down, which is where I felt that Arsenal were really struggling with it. Now, you mentioned Mesut Ozil there, James. Um, he started the game. He played very well, in my opinion. Um, created a few opportunities. Unfortunately, we were unable to take them. But Mikel Arteta has praised his attitude um, and his application in training. Um, and, you know, but still, despite that, despite the manager, the head coach, whatever you want to call him, coming out and saying all those things, there are still fans that want to moan about Mesut Ozil's attitude and application. Yesterday, he he made a point, didn't he? He came in, I thought he worked hard, I thought he showed what he can do with the ball at his feet in terms of his creativity and his ability, the, the, the way he was dropping into pockets, starting patterns of play. I thought yesterday Mesut Ozil showed Arsenal fans what he can do when put in the right team, when given the freedom that he needs. What, what did you make of his performance? I thought he was excellent. Um, but I think, as has been the problem for a large part of his Arsenal career, and I can see why fans do get frustrated with him, is because he, he lacks that consistency um, and we don't see that level of performance week in, week out. And I do think a large part of that is the fact that over the past year or so, Unai Emery changed the team so often and he was playing with such different players. He was never used to the players he was playing with. Um, but also, I think he's quite a, dare I say, a reactionary player. If you notice, when he came back into the team after he'd had that massive period out earlier on in the season when he played that game against Liverpool and was just was electric at Anfield in that match, um, and then he had a couple of really good games and then faded away a little bit and that's when fans start to criticise him a bit more and then you're seeing the Ursley's finished tweets coming out again. And now today, um, yesterday, sorry, he's had a fantastic game away from home against Bournemouth. It's just a case of keeping that consistency. If he can bring that into the game against Chelsea, then I think he's kind of writing off any people that are doubting him. I think uh, Arteta is the sort of manager that he's going to love Mazzo Ozil, he's going to praise him and he's going to build the team around his strengths and if we can get us playing to the strengths of Mesut Ozil, then we're going to be really, really creative going forward, as as we saw yesterday. 
Absolutely. Moving a little bit further back in the midfield, of course, uh, Mikel Arteta paired Granit Xhaka and Lucas Torreira. Um, I've been beating that drum for a while. I feel that it's the most balanced pair. Now, I totally accept the argument that Granit Xhaka, in the long run, may not be good enough. In the long run, he may not be the solution. However, when you look at the options that Arsenal have available, I think that those two are the most balanced pair. And I thought, and I'm going to come on to ask you who yours was later on, but I thought that Granit Xhaka was Arsenal's man of the match yesterday. And I thought that him and Lucas Torreira did a very good job and a better job of policing that midfield than we've seen in recent months. Yeah, I'd completely agree. Granit Xhaka, for me, not just yesterday, but ever since he's come back from his sort of hiatus Agreed. after the whole captaincy issue, has just been fantastic. Um, I know there's a lot of fans that aren't, aren't supportive of him, but I think the way he's uh, played himself, um, he's been really respectful towards the club, the fans. I think he's done everything he should have done after what was a very kind of frosty incident. So I'm, I'm really pleased to see him performing. I think the pressure is off him. Uh, whether he's playing like that because he knows that he's going to be leaving the club in the future, I'm not too sure. Um, and I haven't got a major issue if he is to leave the club. I just hope that Arsenal replace him in the right way and we maybe get someone that's a bit more suited to the Premier League than Granit Xhaka is. But saying that, I think Granit Xhaka is really coming into his prime in a minute, playing some fantastic football. If we were to lose him, then I think that would be a big loss. That's if we don't replace him, though, because our midfield options are Fred Bear at the moment. If, if Granit Xhaka even gets injured, then we're looking at uh, bringing Guendouzi back in, who I just don't think has been at the level we, we need right now. Um, I think he's had some very good flashes of brilliance this season, and he undoubtedly was one of our star performers at the start of the campaign, but now he just seems to have faded away a little bit, and there's a risk that he could burn out. Um, and then we've got Joe Willock, who's still very young. We've got Danny Sabas, who's not really done much in an Arsenal shirt, to be honest. And then the other option is Lucas Torreira. So we're very, very light in midfield, not just physically, but also in terms of numbers. So I think he'd be a big loss if he is to go in the January transfer window. But I hope the club can at least stick with him until the end of the season and get a replacement in. Um, because we're seeing all this talk about him having an agreement with Hertha Berlin, which uh, yeah. is interesting to see. It was interesting how that came out straight after the game. But just getting back to your original point, I think he's been, been really excellent and he's been a um, real standout figure in the Arsenal midfield recently. Agreed. And, and that's the point, isn't it? It's not that Granit Xhaka is this world-beating midfield player. I don't think any of us believe that, but we do believe that he's the best of a bad bunch. And for that reason, he's got to be in the team whilst he's there. Now, um, there is talk about the Hertha Berlin move. And, and for me, you know, me personally, I wouldn't allow him to leave, particularly not in the middle of the season. I don't think it will be helpful to us in any way, shape or form. And that probably stems from the fact that I don't necessarily believe this board will do what's necessary to bring the right person in to replace him in the short term. Now, moving on from the midfield, I want to talk about uh, another player, uh, the young Reese Nelson. Now, he, of course, went out on loan to Hoffenheim last season, had a fantastic start to the campaign out there, didn't necessarily follow it on with the second half of the season. I think that's the common consensus. I've spoken to Kevin Hatchard, a Bundesliga commentator. He was on the podcast a few months back prior to the season starting, actually, and he made that point um, as well. But, you know, for me, Reese Nelson isn't really grasping the opportunities that he's being given at the moment. And I know there would be an argument that maybe he's not playing enough and that injuries have hampered him this season. But for me, there is no reason to be starting him ahead of Nicolas Pepe at the moment. And I think yesterday was another example of that. James, what are your thoughts on Reese Nelson? I know he's young, he's British, everybody wants him to do well. But for me, he's not cutting out at the minute. When you compare him to somebody like Gabriel Martinelli, who's even less experienced, who's younger, they look like they're in a different league to me. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. I think he shows flashes of brilliance. There was a moment yesterday where he picked up the ball and then did a really good dribble and took it past about two Bournemouth players. But that was the only real standout thing I could think about. If he's crossing was a bit better, then I think we'd be looking at a different player. We'd be talking about a more, a more positive performance because the amount of chances he got into where he just needed to whip the ball in and he just put it absolutely nowhere. It's unbelievably frustrating. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm a huge advocate of Reese Nelson and his time in the Bundesliga really excited me. But then, of course, we know he drifted away towards the end of the campaign. 
Uh, but I was really hoping he'd hit the ground running with Arsenal. And he, he just hasn't done that. He's one of these players I think we're we're all really excited about talking about. But I think you've got to bear in mind as well that players develop at different rates. It might not be a case that he'll really hit his stride until he's maybe in his early 20s. So um, I'm not writing him off by any means. I just think he possibly needs a loan in the Premier League where he's going to play week in, week out, maybe at a club like Crystal Palace, um, for example, where he can get that regular game time. I think he'd be an excellent addition to any Premier League side. It's just a case, I think he needs to build himself up physically. He needs to work on his crossing for sure. But he's obviously a player that the managers rate because he's had chances under Freddie, had chances under Emery. Um, Arsene Wenger talked about him prolifically. And now uh, Mikel Arteta is giving him opportunities. So he's obviously doing something right in training. I've got no doubt he's a very talented footballer. I think it's just a confidence thing. He needs to get a goal in the Premier League. And it could just be a flick of the switch thing. Um, but you mentioned Martinelli, who, who's obviously been excellent since coming into the team. Um, I think they, they maybe need to work off one another. Um, and I think Nelson is a player that is going to offer a lot to his Arsenal team. But at the moment, yeah, I'm inclined to agree. I, I, I was a bit bewildered that he got in the team ahead of Pepe yesterday. Yeah, and, and don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't want Rhys Nelson to succeed. It's not that I don't believe he has the talent to succeed in the future. I just mean in the here and now, he's not necessarily doing enough to warrant a place in that side for me. And at a time where Arsenal can't afford to be carrying passengers... I feel like Reese Nelson has not quite taken his opportunities when they've come along. And that, and that for me, is a, a real, real shame. James, moving on to Alexander Lacazette. Of course, he uh, was brought back into the side uh, for the Bournemouth game. He played through the middle with Aubameyang operating from one side. Of course, Reese Nelson, who we've already touched upon, played from the other side. What did you make of Alexander Lacazette's performance? Because, you know, uh, he's finishing a side... He, he does get himself in the right positions. He does show that he's able to hold the ball up, that he can turn. But, you know, it looks like it's just not quite happening for Alexander Lacazette at the moment. We know that when he's on song and when he's on form, he can be a very, very good player. But are you concerned by what you've seen from Alexander Lacazette at the moment? Or are we just seen a player who's suffering from a lack of confidence? I think it's a bit of both, mate. Um we know his, his form away from home is pretty dreadful. Um, I think in the time he's been at Arsenal, he's got something like six goals in the league away from home, which frankly, for the amount of money we've paid for a striker of his calibre, just isn't at the level that we need. Um, and I think yesterday just really reflected how quite detrimental he can be away from home. As you say, he gets himself into all the right positions, get, takes up some brilliant, brilliant positions, holds the ball up magnificently. Um, and brings other players into the game. But then the most frustrating thing is when he gets into these positions, the amount of times he wastes it is uh, unbelievably frustrating, not just in terms of shooting, but in terms of passing as well. There was a moment where he had about three Arsenal players around him. We made a terrific counter-attack. And he just plays the complete wrong pass out to Reese Nelson, who took it nowhere. There was an opportunity uh, where he was bearing down on goal and just couldn't get the ball out of his feet. That happened several times yesterday in excellent scoring positions. So I am frustrated. I am a little bit worried, but... Then again, I do remember the goals he scored against the likes of Liverpool, Chelsea, Tottenham. Um, a big game player that is very, very passionate about his football. Uh, so I'm I'm not overly worried. Uh, I know he's a fantastic player and when he's on song, he's a great player for Arsenal Football Club. The only thing that worries me slightly more than anything is that we had to shift the Bamiang out to the left. And you can't help but think if Bamiang got in the position that Lacazette took up yesterday, you know, he's scoring four out of five of them. Um there were some really, really good opportunities that Lacazette should have been putting away yesterday. And I think if Aubameyang was playing through the middle, we'd, we'd be taking up those chances a bit more. But I mean, I think he needs a goal more than anything because it's, it's been a bit of a barren run for him. So uh, we've got a massive game coming up against Chelsea. Um, controversially, I, I probably would start him again because I think this would be the perfect game for him to really bounce back. And if he does get a goal in that game, then it could really revive his season and start what could hopefully be an excellent second half of the campaign, not just for him, but for the club as well. Yeah, I mean, Alexander Lacazette is a funny player, isn't he? He's, he blows hot and cold. Um, consistency's been a bit of a problem of late, but like you said, he's not really started that many games of late. So I think he was left out in the last two Premier League games prior to the Bournemouth one. So you can see why his form is, is up and down. Like you, I would persist with him. I think he is good enough. I think he will come good. But the Chelsea game that, that you referred to is a really weird one, isn't it? Because... Chelsea are the kind of side that can go to White Hart Lane and win, but then they can suffer a really damaging defeat at home to the likes of Southampton. And that's a common theme that we've seen with Frank Lampard's young side. They struggle against the smaller sides. They're not able to, to put teams to bed at, at Stamford Bridge for whatever reason. 
And so, you know, whilst they've shown some some good signs away from home, you've got to be confident that Arsenal can pick up uh, something from that game, that Arsenal can take the game to them and hurt them. Now, if we look at the statistics from yesterday's game, just a couple that I've picked out. Bournemouth, of course, had 12 shots at goal, 12 attempts, which is significantly less than what we've been giving up in recent months, um, which is a positive sign as well, of course. And Arsenal had 17 attempts at goal. Now, we had 61% of the possession, which is, again, quite a bit more than we've had in recent months. They are steps in the right direction, are they not, James? I mean, we're seeing a team that are obviously more conscious about keeping possession. And what I liked, particularly in the first half, in the first half an hour prior to, to Bournemouth's opener, was that Arsenal were moving the ball with a lot more zip, with a lot more pace. And you can't pull people out of position if you play at five miles an hour. You can't drag fullbacks out of their position. You can't drag midfielders into the challenge if you're moving the ball so slowly because they'll just sit off and let you have it. So that was a real positive. You know, under Arteta, just to summarise, have you been pleased by what you saw yesterday? I know the result wasn't great, but how are you feeling about it and what do you feel um, was different and, and, and better? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really pleased with what I saw yesterday. It was fast-paced. It was really enjoyable to watch. Defensively, I actually thought it was a lot better. I think that was mainly because we dominated the ball a lot more, whereas under Unai Emery, we were very much adapting to the way the opposition played, which I think was something we wanted to see as soon as Arsene Wenger left. But then we realised that if you do that every single game, it's not quite going to work for us. Um, but I liked Absolutely. what Arteta said um, when he came in, that he wants to dominate games. And I think we are a better team when we do that, when we dominate possession. And I think if you look at people like Sakras and David Luiz, players that I've been incredibly critical of this season, the two of them are, are, are you know, I fought for the goal, I suppose. Um, but it was a great Bournemouth move, you've got to say. And we did do what we always do, played it out from the back poorly, gave away possession and let Bournemouth have that opportunity at goal. But I can't really hold them too accountable for that. I thought the two of them um, actually played really well yesterday, to be honest. I thought David Luiz in particular, the amount of chances he created going forward, uh, the amount of times he pushed out and someone like Granite Jack had dropped in. I think there was a real rhythm to our play. It was really exciting to watch. I do think Arteta is the, is the right guy for the long term. Um, I'm really excited by what this Arsenal team can still achieve. And going into that game against Chelsea, I think we've got all the credentials, all the ability to beat them. Um, but we've got to bring what we saw yesterday into that game. We've got to still have our heads held higher because we should have won yesterday. I think the team have got to believe that. And if we start with as much intensity as we did, that I do believe we definitely will get a result against Chelsea. Yeah, agreed. And, and like you said, you know, David Lewis was able to sort of showcase what he's actually good at, which is bringing the ball out of the defence and contribute into the midfield and, and pushing that bit further forward. And if you ask David Lewis to sit deep and defend, you know, I know he's a centre half and this sounds a little bit stupid, but that's not what David Lewis's strength is. His ability to get involved in play further forward makes him very useful because he's not always marked, he's not always picked up, and he can step into that midfield, give you the extra man, and give you the impetus. And I really like that about David Lewis's performance yesterday. Mikel Arteta's dominant style of football is going to bring the best out of him, you'd hope. Um, so the, the signs, of course, were encouraging. Look, my view on it, it wasn't the greatest result. And when you look at the way we performed, you can't help but come away from, from Bournemouth disappointed that we didn't pick up all three points. However, there was a much, um, a very evident improvement in the way we played. And that, for me, was the first step. So... You know, we've got to be patient. We've got to understand that Mikel Arteta is not going to come in and turn this huge ship around in, in, from day one. You know, he's only had, what, three or four training sessions. He's taken over at a very difficult time in and amongst the Christmas period. There are difficult games to come. Chelsea, Manchester United. So I think we've got to be patient and we've got to give him some time. But I think you did see improvement. And, and that was, was, of course, very positive. Now, just finally, James, before we wrap it up, um, who was your Arsenal man of the match? I've given mine. I felt that Granit Xhaka deserved it yesterday. I thought he was very good in and out of position. In terms of your man of the match, who, who would you go for? I'd probably go for Lucas Torreira. I thought um, he was just as good as Granit Xhaka, but it was great to see him back in his defensive role where he was a lot more disciplined. We didn't see him go forward at all, really. And I think the way he shielded the back forward, the amount of times he caught Bournemouth in possession... Um, made some excellent tackles, made some excellent interceptions. It was just great to see him playing the way that we know he can do. So I was really excited by his performance and I hope that he continues to play that way. 
And if he does, and I'm sure we'll see many more personal man of the match performances from him. Absolutely. Great stuff. Thank you very much, James. A uh, big thank you to every single one of you for tuning in. Um, don't forget, we'll be back on Monday where we'll be looking back at the Chelsea game. Hopefully, we'll be discussing Mikel Arteta's first victory. Hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, lots of food, lots of drink. Uh, but it's not over yet. The New Year's parties are still to come. Um, so uh, wishing you all the best to you and your families. Hope you have a a great time and we'll be back very very soon don't forget to like subscribe share all the usual stuff and if you're listening to us via an audio platform please please do leave us a review uh, until monday take care of yourselves and uh, we'll be back very soon cheers <laughs>